Good day, everyone. Uh, welcome to Lanfrica Talks, episode eight. We're very excited to have Wafa Mohammed, who will talk to us on visual grounding of interlingual word embeddings. Very exciting work on visual grounding in the context of African languages. Wafa Mohammed is a research fellow at the University of, University of Tübingen, working on a joint project between the computer graphics department and the linguistics department, where she is investigating the grounding of interlingual word embeddings into vision. She graduated at the African Masters of Machine Intelligence in Senegal. Her research interests include natural language understanding, multilinguality, and multimodality. Thank you so much, Wafa, and the stage is yours. Thank you, Chris, for having me, and welcome, everyone. So I'm going to be talking about my work on visual grounding of interlingual word embeddings, and hopefully get everyone interested in the topic. So here's my agenda for today. I'm going to start with a brief introduction about uh, language grounding and its applications, and then the, met the methodology that I followed in my research and my results. And I will highlight some directions for future research, and then we can have some questions. So I want to start with this quote uh, that says that computers are incredibly fast, accurate, and stupid and humans in, are in, incredibly slow, inaccurate, and brilliant. Together, they are powerful beyond imagination. So this is just a reminder of why are we doing all of this? And the goal of this research, it's just to somehow inject the brilliance and intelligence that we have into the powerful computers, let's say. So moving forward, mm, the definition of language grounding in general uh, is basically linking textual representations to the physical world that we live in. So from a cognitive science point of view, uh, cognitive scientists believe that we perceive the world and we perceive language through all our senses. So to achieve... Um, let's say human-like uh, language understanding, we need to make use of all of our senses. Uh, so as a first step in this direction, I'm making use of vision to enrich textual representations. So the idea is very simple. If you have textual representations, let's say word vectors, you combine images to those vectors somehow, and then you get grounded uh, word representations. So this is the overall goal of grounding. Uh, one of the applications of grounding or the intersection between language and vision in general is um, first of all, visual question answering. So here the task is that just you have um, an image and the question related to this image and you're supposed to answer that question. For example, if you have an image of a pizza and then how many slices of pizza are there, uh, another application is image text retrieval, where you have a textual description and you need to retrieve an image that is related to this description from an image database. So this is an example of that. Um, another application is also image captioning, which we can say the opposite of image text retrieval. So you have an image and you want to generate a description of that image, like shown here. And a general uh, or a mod more broad uh, application for language and vision research is in robot assistance. Let's say if you are designing a robot assistant and you want to um, give it an order to, for example, take a block to a blue room, you have to have a way of linking the word representation of blue to the color blue in the physical world, let's say. And you need to make use of images to do that. So uh, my research is focusing on interlingual visual grounding. So my overall goal is to enrich the textual representations using images through an image captioning data set. And I'm doing that in a multilingual setting 
So I want to map different languages into vision using a shared alignment method. And I experimented with three languages, English, Arabic, and German. And uh, I don't want to go too technical, but this is the overall architecture of my work. Uh, it's very simple, by the way. So I'm making use of um, an image captioning data set. So you have an image and then a description of that image um, in multiple languages. And uh, then I'm making use of pre-trained textual word vectors, love in specific. Uh, the main part of this network is this linear alignment, which is supposed to map my textual representations to the visual space. Um, in other words, getting grounded word vectors. And then this LSTM is just used to generate a single vector per caption or per sentence, which is matched to an image vector that is generated using a pre-trained CNN model. I hope that this made sense, but if anyone wants to go into more details, the details are in our paper, you can check it out. Um, the overall goal of this uh, network is to get a linear alignment that is able to map any textual word vector to the visual space, regardless of the language. So here are some of the results that I got. Uh, I found that visual grounding helped better in capturing the meaning of the word, and it focuses on similarity more than relatedness. By that, I mean like in the visually grounded space, uh, you have, for example, the word people, the nearest neighbors are people, person, persons, while in the textual space, they are believe, know, and many, which are words that are not similar in meaning, but they co-occur um, frequently in the textual space. So this is where the visual grounding helps. And I noticed the similar trend in the three languages. You can take a look at the examples. Moreover, uh, it's still not very clear how to evaluate the quality of uh, tech word vectors in general, but uh, the research now focuses on two benchmarks, which are the similarity benchmarks and the categorization benchmarks. The similarity benchmark is basically when you have a set of uh, a pair of words, let's say pen and pencil, and then a similarity score, a ground truth similarity score. So the task is, will be getting the um, vector representations of the two words and then calculating the similarity between them using any similarity score, let's say cosine similarity. And then you calculate the correlation between the ground truth and the computed similarity scores. The categorization benchmarks is basically uh, clustering different words into different categories according to their meaning. So. The results I'm showing here are the results on the uh, English embeddings uh, on the two benchmarks. So as you can see, grounding helped in both benchmarks. So uh, going up, the results are better. Uh, the grounded version was better than the textual one, even just grounding English alone. And adding another language on top of it improved over single grounding or monolingual grounding. But what's interesting is that on the similarity benchmark, German achieved better than Arabic uh, in improving English, while in the categorization benchmark, it was the opposite, um, which raises a question of how does this linear alignment map the different languages and how the languages interact with each other, and whether if we get um, another benchmark, what is the expected trend that we could see? Those are still open questions. So now what? <laughs> uh, I just want to say first that, like, I want to highlight this quote saying that the world belongs to the few people who are not afraid to get their hands dirty. So please get your hands dirty because we need a lot of work, especially in the African context. Um, here are some uh, directions for how to proceed in this research. Uh, first thing to try is to um, find a way to align different languages or different language embedding spaces in a shared space before even including images. Uh, 
because languages have different structures, different alphabets. So, and there are, there is some work available in achieving multilingual embeddings or aligning uh, different languages in a shared space. So it would be interesting to try this and then round them to the visual space. Also, there's still the question of how to evaluate the quality of the word embeddings and the grounded embeddings specifically. And um, we can also try if our grounding scheme can generalize to more languages and African languages in specific. And the big picture and the overall goal of the research is to achieve a universal visual grounding model that's able to inform textual representations of the visual space, regardless of the language. Um, I have another topic that I wanted to highlight. Um, so the work that I mentioned before was focusing on the language side and achieving better textual representations. But this work is on the visual side. Um, I have been experimenting with uh, some of the image text retrieval models. So you just give it a text and then it gives you an image. Um, I was just basically asking it to give me uh, an image of a wedding ceremony in specific countries. So for example, this is a wedding ceremony in the United States. I would say that it's kind of descriptive because there is, at least there is a white dress and a su some suits and what appears to be a wedding venue. And um, this one is a wedding ceremony in China. So I'm not Chinese. I'm not sure if this is descriptive or not, but um, like just a simple Google search, you can see that um, Chinese weddings are generally, yeah, they have the red themed wedding. Uh, but so I am from Sudan and I was asking the model to generate a wedding ceremony in Sudan. And this is nothing like a wedding ceremony in Sudan. Uh, on the right, you can see the results from a simple Google search. Um, this is what a wedding ceremony in Sudan looks like. So the traditional wedding, you have uh, the, the bride would be wearing red and the groom would be wearing white and red. And also we have in the modern weddings, the white dress and the suit, but it's nothing like the images to the left. So clearly there is uh, an under, under representation of some cultures in these models. And uh, this has been highlighted in some of the research available. So the, the paper titled Visually Grounded Reasoning Across Languages and Cultures. Uh, it was by some researchers at Mila and Cambridge. I think this is the link to the paper. And uh, it achieved the best paper award at EMNLP 2021. So in their work, they mentioned that ImageNet dataset, which is the baseline data set for most uh, of the research in vision is uh, highly biased towards English. And they tried to solve this problem by creating a new data set by letting native speakers generate, generate both uh, concepts and images that are culture specific. And they move forward and create a multilingual data set for multicultural reasoning over vision and language. So a data point in this data set consists of two images and the caption and a true and false label saying whether this caption uh, describes the images or not. So the task is uh, discriminating whether the caption is true or false. And the tested state of the art vision language models on this task and clearly the performance, the cross-lingual transfer was lagging. Uh, behind the performance in English. So there is a lot of work to be done in this direction um, and different questions to be asked, whether we should generate a data that can generalize to cultures or whether we should have a better model that's really robust or whether we should work on the language side and generate uh, better textual representations. So yeah, this is an open direction of research. And this is all what I have for today. Thank you for listening and I'm happy to take any questions that you have.